When you're searching for information for your academic work, it helps to understand the difference between primary and secondary sources and between popular and scholarly sources. When you search for any information, you think a bit about what you're missing or where your information gap is. That helps you determine where to search for information and how to search for it. If you don't know how your best friend from high school is doing, you look them up on Facebook. If you don't know how to cook that great dish you had on your vacation in Peru last year, you probably look for a recipe on Google. But what about research for your courses? Should you use Google or something else? Well, before you decide, you need to figure out what information you're missing and what types of information you need. After that, you're ready to start looking. Do you need a primary source? Primary sources provide evidence of events and help answer questions about the past or the present. Questions like, what did men's fashion look like in the 1800s? Or, how did newspapers cover the historic meeting between the President of the U.S. and the leader of North Korea? A primary source can also be an original work of art. The movie The Godfather is a primary source, as is a poem by Langston Hughes. Often primary sources are personal and provide first-hand accounts of events. Some examples of primary sources are a photograph of the University of Arizona women's swim team from 1931 and letters sent from a new Arizona immigrant to her family back home. And even a tweet from a politician can be a primary source. Really, a primary source is anything from a first-hand account that you use as evidence. Do you need secondary sources? A secondary source is based on primary sources and interprets, analyzes, or describes them. Secondary sources can help you understand new or different ideas about primary sources. One of Shakespeare's plays is a primary source, but an analysis of the play written by a scholar would be a secondary source. Secondary sources can be used as primary sources in some situations. A magazine article is usually a secondary source, but if you're interested in researching attitudes towards women in the 1950s, then those articles become primary sources. Indeed, almost any publication can be a primary source depending on how you are using it. What about an interview of an eyewitness about a bridge that collapsed from a newspaper article written yesterday? That's a primary source because it's a first-hand account, and it's a popular source. Some examples of popular sources are magazine articles, online news sites, and YouTube videos. These are aimed at a general audience and are written in everyday language. They may even have a list of references, but that alone doesn't make them scholarly. Scholarly sources are written for an academic audience and aimed at other researchers in the field. An astronomer conducts a study and writes an article for other astronomers. Scholarly sources are often peer-reviewed. That means that a group of scholars from the same field of study have reviewed the article and evaluated it for publication. Another researcher could use that paper to inform their own research. As a student, you may use it to help you better understand a topic. Remember, each type of information is created with a different process to fulfill different needs. For example, a tweet is created in a few minutes by a single person. We often use tweets to connect with people or catch up on the day's headlines. A news article is written by a journalist who may spend days or weeks investigating and writing a story. We may read these stories to inform us and help us make better decisions. A scholarly paper created by a group of specialized researchers may take months to research and write. We read those to better understand a topic and to inform future research. So where should you start looking for these different information resources? Well, that depends on what you need. Let's say you're working on a multimedia presentation on the architecture of Tucson. If you need background information, you could start by using the library to find a book. What if you need some primary sources, like historical drawings from a local architect? You can find primary sources in many places, online, at a museum, and in the library. The University of Arizona Special Collections has thousands of primary sources about Arizona, the University, and the Southwest. If you need an analysis of the effects of affordable housing in the Tucson area, you should use a library database to find a scholarly source. And if you need to know the number of homes in Tucson with solar power, you need to find a statistic. Many popular sources of information are available for free on the web, but others require you to pay for access. Often your library will have access to these sources so that you won't have to pay for them. Scholarly sources are often published in costly academic journals. 
You can access these sources for free using one of the library databases. So before you start looking for information, think about what type of information you need and where the best place to look for that information is. Google and Wikipedia are great places to start, but the University of Arizona Library is another essential place to look, especially when you need primary and scholarly sources.